let's talk about minor protozoan pathogen. Assalamu alaikum everyone, welcome back to another episode of Parasitology series. Today we are going to talk about minor protozoan pathogens. But before getting into the video, I'd like to tell that these videos are meant for educational purposes. Things and treatments may change with time. If I get wrong or miss anything, your input is always welcomed in the comment section. Let's get into Lecture it. Lecture outline. First, we'll talk about Ganthamoeba, Naglaria, then we'll move on to Babesia. The third one is Balantidium. The fourth one is Cyclospora. The fifth one is Isospora. The sixth one is Microsporidia. Ganthamoeba and Naglaria. Uh, the full names of these organisms are Acanthamoeba castellani and Nagleria fovlari. These are free-living amoebas. They are responsible for causing the disease meningoencephalitis. Their habitat is that they are found in room fresh water, lakes, and in soils. Their life cycle involves trophozoites and cysts. Cysts are quite resistant and are not killed by chlorination. Transmission of Acanthamoeba and Naglaria and their pathogenesis. Naglaria trophozoites usually enter the body through mucous membranes while an individual is swimming. Acanthamoeba is carried into skin or eyes during trauma. These organisms can penetrate the nasal mucosa and cribriform plate to produce a purulent meningitis and encephalitis that are usually fatal. Acanthamoeba also causes keratitis. What is keratitis? It is an inflammation of cornea that is in our eyes that occurs primarily in those who wear contact lenses. With increasing use of contact lenses, keratitis has become the most common disease associated with acanthamoeba infection. Epidemiology. Acanthamoeba infections occur primarily in immunocompromised individuals, whereas naglaria infections occur in healthy persons, usually children. In United States, these rare infections occur mainly in southern states and California. Contact lenses increase the risk. Amoebas have been recovered from contact lenses, lens cases, and lens disinfectant solutions. Tape water contaminated with amoebas is a source of infection for lens users. Babesia. Full name is Babesia microti, and it is responsible for causing Babesiosis, it is a zoonotic infection. What is a zoonotic infection? The infection transmitted from an animal to the human. Babesia is transmitted by the bite of tick, Isodes damini. It was renamed as Isodes capillaris epidemiology. As we know, Babesia microti causes babesiosis, that is a zoonotic infection. It is acquired chiefly in coastal areas and islands of northeastern coast of United States. The sporozoan organism is endemic in rodents. These planning patients and patients being treated with rituximab are affected more severely. Pathogenesis. Babesia infects red blood cells, causing them to lyse, but unlike Plasmodia, it has no eggs or no erythrocytic phase. Clinical manifestations. Influenza-like symptoms begin gradually and may last for several weeks. Hepatosplenomegaly and anemia occur. Babesia. Diagnosis. Its diagnosis is made by seeing intraerythrocytic ring-shaped parasites on Jimsa stained blood smears. The intraerythrocytic ring-shaped trophozoites are often in tetrars in the form of a Maltese cross. Unlike the case of Plasmodia, there is no pigment in erythrocytes. Treatment. The treatment of choice for mild to moderate disease is the combination of atrocon and azithromycin. Patients with severe disease should receive a combination of quinidine and clindamycin. Exchange transfusion should also be considered in patients with severe disease. Prevention. Prevention involves protection from tick bites. How can we protect ourselves? By using a chemical repellent, by wearing light colored protective clothing, tuck pants in socks, avoid tick infested areas, 
and if a person is bitten, prompt removal of tick is appreciated. Balantidium. Its full name is Balantidium coli. Its morphology is that it is spherical, ovoid, large ciliated organism. It is responsible for balantidiosis. Epidemiology. Balantidium is found worldwide, but only infrequently in United States. Habitat. Domestic animals, especially pigs, are the main reservoir. Transmission. Transmission occurs by ingesting the cysts in food or water contaminated with animal or human feces. Pathogenesis. After ingestion, cysts of Balantidium coli enters into the small intestine and causes an ulcer, and that is similar to the ulcer caused by Antamoeba histolytica. The link of Antamoeba histolytica video is in the description or in the right top corner of the video. Do check that out, guys. Clinical manifestation, extra intestinal lesions do not occur. Asymptomatic diarrhea, diagnosis. Large spherical or ovoid ciliated cysts with a characteristic V-shaped nucleus in stool are found. And this is done uh, with the sample of stool and viewed under microscope. No serologic tests are done. The treatment of choice for the balantidium is tetracycline. And prevention is that we should avoid contamination of the food and water with the feces, whether the human feces or the animal feces. Next up is Cyclospora. Its full name Cyclospora is Cyclospora catenensis. It is a member of Coccidia. And it is an intestinal protozoan. Epidemiology. This infection um, is caused worldwide and one outbreak in United States were, was attributed to the ingestion of contaminated raspberries. It occurs in immunocompetent and immunocompromised individuals. Habitat. There is no evidence for an animal reservoir. Transmission. By fecal oral transmission, especially via contaminated water supplies. Clinical manifestations. Watery diarrhea. Loss of appetite. All the symptoms associated with the intestine are specific to this disease. Weight loss and fatigue, stomach cramps and pain, bloating, flatulence and nausea can be prolonged and relapsing. This infection caused by cyclospora can be prolonged and relapsing, and especially in immunocompromised patients. Diagnosis. Diagnosis is made by taking a sample of stool and viewing it under the microscope. By using a modified acid fast stain, we will visualize spherical oocysts and no serologic tests are done. The treatment. The treatment of choice is trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole, Bactrim, Saptra, or Cotrim. IV fluids. Why? Because the patient is dehydrated because of a long-term diarrhea and there are are less fluids and electrolytes in the patient's blood. So that's why IV fluids are required. Prevention. Avoid contaminated food and frequent hand washing. Isospora. Its full name is Cytoisospora belli or Isospora belli. It is responsible for cystoisosporiasis or isosporiasis. It is an intestinal protozoan. Epidemiology. It affects immunocompromised patients, for example, those suffering from AIDS, acquired immunodeficiency syndrome. And its life cycle parallels that of the other members of coccidia. Transmission occurs via fecal oral route. Pathogenesis. After ingestion, the cysts enter the upper small intestine. They invade the intestinal mucosa, causing destruction of the brush border of the intestine. And you know what? The pathogenesis of diarrhea is unknown. Clinical manifestations. Chronic profuse watery diarrhea in immunocompromised patients. Abdominal pain along with cramps. Loss of appetite, nausea and vomiting. Fever. Diagnosis. We will take a sample of stool. Diagnosis is made by finding the typical oocysts in fecal specimens. 
no serologic tests are available. Treatment. The treatment of choice is the combination of trimethoprim and sulfamethoxazole. Choice a day for 7 to 10 days. Microsporidia. Enterocytosone benacy. Enthalitazone intestinalis. Morphology. A group of spore-forming unicellular parasites characterized by obligate intracellular replication considered protozoans or protists. Now known to be fungi or a sister group to fungi. Spores are quite small, approximately 1 to 3 micrometers. Microsporidia have a unique feature, that is polar tube, which is coiled within the spore and extrudes to attach to the human cell upon infection. The protoplasm of the spores then enters the human cell via polar tube. Transmission. Transmission occurs via the fecal oral route. Symptoms. Diarrhea that can be severe, persistent, and watery in AIDS patients, acquired immunodeficiency syndrome patients. Abdominal pain, flatulence, and body aches are common. The complicated infection can reach to central nervous system, causing encephalitis or meningitis, reaching to eyes, causing other infections, and reaching to Janitor urinary diagnosis. We'll collect samples like stool, intestinal biopsy, urine, CSF, cerebrospinal fluid, sputum, or corneal scrapping because if the infection has reached to the eyes, that's why we'll collect samples from the cornea. And we'll go for microscopy and we will visualize pores under the microscope. And the treatment of choice for this disease is albendazole. And that's it for today's video. I hope you guys have learned something. Don't forget to connect with me on all of my socials. I've got my Instagram, I've got my Twitter, and I really upload vlogs. If you have any suggestion, feel free to share with me in the comment section. Till next time, Allah Hafiz.